Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Gateway Church Cymru Online. My name is Luke Morgan. I'm the pastor of Gateway, and I'd like to welcome you tonight to our online prayer meeting. It's so great that we're able to come together to pray and call on the name of God. I know at Gateway, we're a church that believes in the power of prayer. We believe prayer changes things. And I want to encourage you tonight. If you have a prayer request, if you have a need, then please send it in to us. You could do that by posting it in the comments on whatever social media platform you're watching this on. Or you can send it to us on our website, gatewaychurchcumry.co.uk forward slash prayer requests. We'd love to pray for you and believe for God to move in your life. Well, so great that we're able to come together. And tonight we're going to be continuing our series, which we started last week, which is called Four Things That We Can Pray For. And then at the end of our service, we're going to be praying and calling upon God together. So I want to encourage you from the outset, let's join together. Let's pray and ask God to come and speak to us and move in our hearts tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that we're able to come together as a church family tonight. Lord, we thank you that we can call upon you, Lord. Lord, that there is access to you now through what you have done. Lord, we thank you that we are coming before our Heavenly Father tonight. Lord, you are a Father who loves us and cares for us and is concerned about every area of our lives. And so, Lord, I just pray tonight, would you meet needs? Would you answer prayers, Lord Jesus? And we ask this, Lord, so that our lives might just bring glory and honour to your name. That we might point people to you and tell them of what you have done. Lord, bring encouragement to those who need encouragement. Those who need healing, bring healing tonight. Those who need comfort, I pray, would you minister your comfort tonight? Lord, we just look to you. Lord, we give you praise for all that you've done and for who you are. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to continue our series that we started last week, which is called Four Things We Can Pray For. Last week we looked at the first thing we should pray for, and that is the peace of God. And tonight we're going to look at the second thing which we can pray for, which is a godly perspective. The second thing is perspective. Now something powerful happens and takes place when we pray. When we begin to pray and the more we pray, we begin to focus less and less on ourselves and our desires and our wants and our circumstances. And we actually begin to focus more and more on God himself we become less obsessed with the method and we become more focused and obsessed with the master, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our perspectives completely change when we begin to pray. You know, when we pray, we get a real picture of who we are. We see that we are sinners, that we are failures, that we are weak. But also when we pray, we get to see a greater picture of who God is, how strong he is, how mighty he is how we can trust in him, how we can rely on him. We see how merciful and gracious and good and kind our God is. There's this change in our perspective as we pray and as we call upon God. And we begin to see our circumstances in a completely new light as we pray as well. And that's one of the incredible things that happens when we pray. There's this change in our perspective. You know, prayer, it not only changes our circumstances, but it does something far more important than that. Prayer changes you and me. Prayer changes you and me. God uses prayer to change us, to mould us, to become more like him. And also so that we might depend on him more and more. And when we pray more and more, it becomes less and less about what we want and our will and our desires. And it becomes more and more, God, we want your kingdom to come. We want your will to be done. Now, I do want to say that God wants to encourage us to, to call upon him. God encourages us to pray and bring our needs and our requests before him. We are encouraged to do that. And I encourage you to do that this evening. But you know, there is this shift that takes place where we begin to focus more and more on God. We begin to get a godly perspective. So you might be wondering tonight, how can we practically pray for perspective? How do we get this godly perspective through prayer? Well, I believe that we get this godly perspective when we pray regularly. This isn't just a one-off prayer that we can pray. This is something that happens as we pray for a long, long time. And it's something that we should ask God for every single time that we pray. You know, we've been basing ourselves in this series in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. And that's what we're going to focus on tonight. And this is the Apostle Paul saying, and he says this, verse 18 of Ephesians 6. says, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Paul says there, pray at all times. Be persistent in your prayers. 
Now, Paul doesn't just say to pray in the mornings or pray in the evenings or just pray on Sundays. But Paul, Paul says here, pray at all times. You know, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, Paul writes to the, the church in Thessalonica and he says to them, never stop praying. Paul encourages us and he encourages all believers to keep praying and calling upon God. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to walk around 24-7, you know, constantly praying. You know, we'd be looked at it as crazy people. I'm sure people would think that we've lost our minds. That we, And not only that, not only would people think that we're crazy, but it's not possible for us to, to pray 24-7. It's not possible. But what Paul is saying here is that we as believers should seek to cultivate a life of prayer. That we should be praying. You know, we should take many times throughout the day to pray and call upon God. Uh, God. We should have set times to pray and call upon God. Paul is saying here that we should be intentional about our prayer time. I know it's important for us to build this rhythm of prayer into our lives. Just like reading the Bible every day. We should pray every single day. And we should do this not just for repetition's sake or because the pastor or a leader has, has told you to do this. But we should do this so that we would grow closer and closer to Jesus, so that we might know him more. And most importantly, that we might know his heart and be able to carry his will out in and through our lives. We should pray so that we can get close to God and know him. And so maybe this week, I want to encourage you, even this week, if you haven't already got a set time to pray, I encourage you to do that. Find a time throughout the day which is best for you and start praying. Use that time every single day to pray and call upon God. And as I said, maybe you've never done this before, but I encourage you, maybe spend the first five to ten minutes of your day praying and call upon God. Start small and then before you know it, you'll long to stay in God's presence. You'll long to pray for more, longer and longer. You won't want to leave that place of prayer. I want to encourage you to set that time where you can call upon God and as we do that as we build a life of prayer as we cultivate this life of prayer then we'll begin to get God's perspective on our lives and on what's happening in our lives you know I believe more than ever we need to have a godly perspective especially at this time you know with all that's going on in this world with coronavirus I really believe that we as believers and as the church we need to have God's perspective on this situation I pray and I believe that God is even speaking to us at this time and is encouraging us that he is still in control. I pray that we as a people wouldn't be a fearful people and wouldn't just listen to, to the media and, and to the government and all these things, even though we should. I pray that the ultimate voice in our life would be the voice of God and that we would have his eyes on all that is happening. I really believe this is a time not for the church to shrink back, but I believe this is a time where God is trying to shake us up, to move us forward, to get us out of our comfort zone. I believe this is a time where the church could rise up and advance to make Jesus known. I believe this is a time for the church to step forward, to take hold of going online and to reach people online everywhere. This isn't a time to shrink back. And I do pray that even when we come back together, you know, my heart for us as Gateway Church isn't to, to leave our online just as something that we use during this period. But let it be something that is a part of us as a church as we continue to reach out and share the good news of Jesus everywhere. I pray that this will be a season where we'll go deeper in God, where we'll grow in our relationship with God where our homes would be filled with the presence of God. I pray this will be a time where we grow closer as families. You know, I really believe God is moving in this season. And I pray that God would open up our eyes by his Holy Spirit to see what he is doing. You know, I love what Robert Morris, the pastor of Gateway Church in America, he says this. He says the Holy Spirit wants to pull back the curtains so that you begin to see God more clearly. God wants to open up our eyes. God wants us to have his, his eyes and see what he is doing in and through our lives. So I want to encourage you to pray for a godly perspective. Ask God, God, what is it you are doing in my life? God, what are you trying to work out? Let me surrender to you. Let me follow you. Let us put our trust in him. I encourage you, even tonight, let's be a people who pray for God's perspective on things because that is what we want in our lives. Let's pray that so that we would be gl bring glory and honour to Jesus in and through our lives. Amen. Well, right now we're going to come to a, a time of prayer. And the first thing that we're going to do before we begin to pray for all the requests that have come in, we're going to actually take 30 seconds tonight, as we did last week, 
And I want to encourage you to take these 30 seconds just to begin praying for God's perspective. Ask him to open up your eyes, your spiritual eyes, so that you might see how he sees. Ask him to to enable you to walk by faith and not by sight. Let's be a people who call upon God. So please, let's just take these 30 seconds and ask him to open up our eyes that we might have a godly perspective. And then we're going to pray for all these other needs. Amen. Amen. What are we going to continue in our praying right now? Are we going to pray first of all for our nation and for the leaders in our nation? We'll just pray that in this season they will know the wisdom of God, especially as there's talks of lockdown easing in the days and the weeks to come. We'll just pray that they would know God's wisdom on when to act and how to act as well. So let's just pray for our government, that our government would have a godly perspective at this time. So let's pray together. Amen. Lord, we just thank you tonight for our government. Lord, we thank you for our Prime Minister. We thank you, Lord, for our national leader, Lord. And we just pray for them this evening. Lord, we pray that they wouldn't act out of their own will or their own desires, Lord, or even from pressure from other people. But Lord, I pray, would you give our leaders wisdom at this time? Give them wisdom on how they should respond, Lord, and how we should ease out of lockdown. Give them a clear plan, oh Lord, I pray. Lord, guide them, I pray. Guide their decisions, Lord. Lord, we ask this for your precious name, for your glory. Protect them, Lord. We thank you for them. We ask this in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, as we continue to pray along those lines for for leaders, let's just pray even right now for church leaders. You know, as we hear the government ease in lockdown in the weeks to come, you know, I'm sure many church leaders will be wondering where we can reopen again as churches and, and also how church is going to look like, what it's going to look like when we go back. And I, I want to encourage you, let's join f- and, and pray together for all church leaders. Let's pray for the church in general that at this time we would have God's perspective, that we would fe- follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and that we would see God's will being done and not man's will being done. Amen. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you are head of your church, Lord. It is not man's church, it is your church, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that you would help all of us who are leaders within your church. Help us to be led by your spirit, I pray, Lord. Lord, I pray for all of the pastors in in the Kana Valley at this time. Lord, we thank you for them. Bless them, bless their churches, I pray. But Lord, I pray help them even in the weeks to come, Lord Jesus, to plan, Lord God, on how we should come out of this and how we can reopen, Lord. Give them wisdom. Give them great God ideas, I pray, Lord. Help us as churches not just to revert back to normal, but Lord, to step into your will, to see your will being done. Help us to move forward, Lord God, and to see in your plan unfold for your church, I pray. So help every leader at this time, oh God. Lord, I pray, help every church, I pray, up and down this valley. Lord, I pray that when the day comes, when we do reopen in person, Lord, I pray that there will be many, many more people joining us, Lord. Many people who have found you as Lord and Saviour. Lord, I pray, may this be a season of growth, Lord. Help us as a church to see this, Lord, as you see it, as a season of opportunity to share about you, Lord. Lord, I pray, guide us, fill us, anoint us with your spirit, I pray. Lord, we ask this so that your kingdom will come and your name will be glorified. Lord, we thank you and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as we come to a a close of our prayer time together, we're going to just pray right now for all the prayer requests that have been coming in in recent weeks. We're going to pray for all those who are sick. We're going to pray for all those who are going through difficulties in their lives and within family situations and even with their jobs. We're going to pray that God would minister there. We're going to pray tonight for all those who have lost loved ones in recent months and recent years. We'll pray they know the comfort of God as well. And you know, I want to encourage you, please join with us as we pray for our church family, also those who are on their own. Let's pray that they would know the comfort of God tonight. So let's join together as a church. You know, even though we're not together physically, even though I can't see you, I know you can see me tonight. Let's join together in prayer and let's believe that God will answer prayer and minister in lives and that he will be glorified. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you that you care for us, that you love us. Lord God, I thank you that there is nothing too difficult for you, O Lord. And Lord, I do pray tonight for all these needs that have been coming in. 
Lord, I just pray, would you minister? Would you bring breakthrough, oh God? Lord, I pray for those who are struggling at this time. Lord, I pray, bring strength. Lord, those who are feeling lost, Lord God, those who are really not coping at this time, may they know your strength, may they know your guidance, may they know your presence. Lord, I do pray for all those who have lost loved ones in recent weeks, recent months and recent years. Lord, we think of all those in our church family, Lord, as well, Lord. Lord, we pray tonight for Marilyn, Lord. Lord, we do pray tonight for Olive, Lord, for Irene, Lord, for Lydia, for my Lord. I pray just be with these who've lost loved ones in recent weeks and months, Lord God, and years. Be with them, I pray. May they know your comfort and your presence at this time. And Lord, all others who have lost loved ones, be with them and their families, I pray, in Jesus' name. Lord, those who are sick who are watching online, I pray in Jesus' name that you should bring healing, Lord. Bring complete deliverance, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for all those in our church family who are sick and who are struggling, Lord God. Minister, I pray. May they know your healing touch even right now, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you are not confined to a church building, but Lord, you are able to minister and bring healing wherever we are. So I pray, bring healing in Jesus' name. Lord, those who are struggling at this time, maybe with a family situation, Lord, I pray bring restoration, bring healing, Lord God. Bring guidance, I pray in Jesus' name. Those who have lost a job recently, I pray, Lord, in your name, provide a job, Lord, where there seem to be no way. I ask this in Jesus' name. Lord, for all those who've contracted coronavirus and with loved ones who have who have lost uh, who they've lost, Lord, because of this virus, I pray, Lord, bring healing to those who are sick, and Lord, minister comfort to those who have lost loved ones. And Lord, I just pray at this time that every single person who is watching right now, Lord, every person in our nation would know the peace of God. We pray in Jesus' name tonight against coronavirus, and we pray it shall be eradicated. And we ask this for the glory and honor of Your name alone, Jesus. We give you praise for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining us for our online prayer meeting this evening. It's been so great to come together to hear from God's word and to pray. And I want to encourage you, please keep sending in your prayer requests. We'd love to pray for you as a church. But please stay connected with us as a church. You can do this through our website, gatewaychurchcumry.co.uk and through our social media platforms as well. And I want to encourage you, please join us again on Thursday evening at 7pm for our online Bible study. You know, we're looking forward to continuing this series, which we began last week, called The Parables of Jesus. So join us again on Thursday evening at 7pm. But please know we are here for you as a church. We are praying for you. And I do hope you have a great week. God bless.